Hello everybody, Jared Voley here for creativestandup.com. This video, I wanna talk about uh, relaxing before a show. So how do you keep from freaking out before a show if you are the kind of person that has stage fright? And, I, and I'm gonna make this video kind of short. I'm, I'm not gonna go super in depth on it, or at least I don't plan to. I often just go on tangents and talk for a long time, but. I want to quickly talk about my own um, struggle with this as well and, and give you uh, one or two tips for, for how you can actually um, kind of not, not just get over it. I don't think you should, uh, you shouldn't just ignore the stage fright or say like this is a normal thing. I think you can, you can completely get over it, but it's difficult to not pick up that bad habit again. So I think it's something that you can instantly, you can, it, it, will, it will not think, it, it can instantly go away, but it can instantly come back as well, all right? You can take any situation and you can say, well, you know, usually this is fairly easy for me or I don't worry about it, but now it's different because now like some, the consequences are higher or something like that. So I'll give you the easiest example is just when you're talking to people normally, your brain knows how to formulate, it knows how to put together words and then string those words together and put a, put a sentence together even though you might not know what the entire sentence is before you start that sentence, right? Your brain can figure all of that out on the fly. Right, And we know that, we do it all the time, but we only allow that to happen when we're comfortable. However, when we are having this like um, kind of the fight or flight on stage, the reason is because we're seeing this as a different situation, right? So it's like, I feel comfortable talking to my friend, but now I wanna go on a first date. Now I have to talk to this person on a first date and I'm gonna freak out about it because this one is different, right? So we kind of have these ways of justifying why this situation requires that we, we stress out before, right? And it's interesting that the stress out is always, the stress always comes because we wanna make sure that we're prepared, right? And for whatever reason, the, the answer to am I prepared is always no because of one small detail. And uh, early on in my career, I've talked about this before, but uh, I had this ridiculous uh, plan for how I would overcome my stage fright, right? Because I, I went from doing improvisational comedy um, since six and a half grade, improvisational comedy, and I loved it. I never felt afraid on stage. But then after high school, I got into stand-up comedy proper, like I started really getting into it, and I started actually be getting stage fright for the first time. And I thought that that was something that was uh, necessary or, or uh, would go away in time. And that's actually what I was taught. Conventional wisdom says, your stage fright will go away um, with time. Unfortunately, that's not true. Um, because I, I went for years just super competitive and I drilled, I, everything was so important. Each show was so important to me that I stressed myself out before that show. So there was no amount of time that would uh, overcome my stage fright right? Not in my career and, and not for practicing individual shows. Because I would do, I, I had the very strict, like I had a, um, a spreadsheet where like I had, okay, like here's, I'll do a five minute show and then here's line one. And I would say the word number one, I'd say it like 10 times or something. And then word number two, I'd say it 10 times. And then I'd put those two words together and I'd say that 10 times. Or, and I don't know if 10, uh, I don't remember the number offhand, but it was ridiculous and it would take me eight hours of just rehearsing for just a five minute show. And I thought in my head, you know, it, it made sense that that would make my stage fright go away. Unfortunately, it didn't because I had a 
incorrect understanding of stage fright, right? I thought it was something that would go away with practice and all I had to do was continue practicing so much that I couldn't possibly fail. But what I ended up doing is I taught my brain that this is super important and you cannot fuck this part up, right? That was what, like, so all that practice just taught my brain that it should be more scared, right? Which is the exact opposite thing. This is why, like, early on in my career, I had these situations where I was ready to throw up before getting on stage, Right, and it could be like three or four people, but I would freak out. And I never had this. Uh, I remember in middle school, I performed improv comedy for a few hundred people. It never occurred to me that I should be afraid doing that because it was just fun and you were in the flow, in the moment, right? I trusted myself to, to be funny without any jokes at all and it was way easier, right? Because I allowed my brain to do what it already knows how to do, right? Contrast that with adult me who had, who had all the answers, right? And who's gonna say like, okay, here's the exact phrasing of this punchline. And it has to be like, the, the word has, I have to go, uh, and a vocal tone goes up here and it goes down here. And I have to get it correct. And I have to use you know, these exact words. And I perform, I rehearsed those, that sentence so many times that it was just this, you know how you can take any English word and you can just say it a hundred times in a row. And it just feels like a, like a foreign language. Uh, you know, as, as you're talking about it, the, the, it just, something about your brain just goes, this, is, I don't know what this is anymore. It kind of just becomes something weird and different. That was kind of what I was doing with, with over rehearsing uh, early on in my career. So I rehearsed these so much that my, my brain said, okay, when, after I say this word, I say this word, and then I say this word. So that's kind of what my brain said. And then I would be on stage and anything that, um, that pulled my attention away, right? Anything that broke the chain of words that I had memorized, even a bigger laugh than I expected, anything that broke the chain just completely threw me off. Even though I had done so much preparation in order to do the show. Because my brain said, okay, after this word goes this word. But once a laugh or something unexpected happens that cuts the train, all of a sudden, I had no idea what to do. And I found myself scrambling for, for my set list to figure out what the next joke was. So unfortunately, no amount of preparation is going to um, cure your stage fright. That is, um, you might, might think that's disheartening at first, but actually it's, it's great because your stage fright, um, it's, you, you, can be, you can get over it in the moment, right? And you can also pick it up in the moment as well. So this is something like, for me, I am not perfect at this at all, right? So don't think like that I never, I never have that thought that comes into my head. I have that thought every time, like, well, yeah, probably, probably almost every time that I hit record on these videos, the very last thought I have before I hit record is, am I actually ready, right? Do I have my thoughts prepared? Am I going to be, is the video going to be good enough to post? Or is it going to be like 20 minutes and then I hit end and then I realized that the whole 20 minutes I was just saying things and I never had one central thesis that I was working on. Like those ideas go through my head and they do interrupt my creative flow at times. I have learned to ignore those, I guess I would say maybe more often than I, than I pay attention to them, right? So I can hit, hit record and maybe for the first like 10 or 20 seconds, I'm just like, uh, I'm not entirely sure. But after that, I can kind of get into the flow and I can start talking to you directly.
And that's the next part that I want to talk about is for stage fright. Your, uh, the, you, your conscious brain can only focus on one thing at a time. All right, so if you're focusing on um, <laughs> you're focusing on anything, okay? So you take you take uh, whatever you're you're watching this video right now. The more focus you put on this video, the less focus you have for anything else, right? You cannot focus on this video and also be focusing consciously focusing on what you're hearing, you know, in the living room or in the kitchen or wherever you are, right? Your brain can't do that. You can switch back and forth really quickly, but your brain cannot do two things at the same time, right? The people that say, I'm a good multitasker, don't understand the brain. You are not a multitasker. You are a person that can switch quickly between paying attention to two different things and then still be able to kind of function normally. And by the way, there are no good multitaskers that's uh, just psychological research just says that you're actually, you might think you're a better multitasker, but you're not. <laughs> this, is, this is just factual. Anyway, so your focus is super important when you are on stage. Because for me, when I was beginning comedy, my focus was always on, on making sure I didn't mess up. Right, so that's the whole reason I, I prepared so much is because I was afraid of messing up, or I was um, well. Okay, so there's two different things. So one is that really competitive. I want to be the best at what I'm doing, right? So the, if I want to be the best, I need to prepare a lot. And then there's oh, I'm afraid of jumping on stage. So what should I do if I'm afraid? I should prepare a lot, right? So you can get to the same answer by asking both by coming from opposite ends of the spectrum kind of leads you to that same that same thing where you should uh, oh I need to over prepare anyway for me over preparing was um, was basically it, was, it taught my brain to freak out every time I was on stage but when I was on stage I, I would never allow myself to talk directly to the audience right if you are experiencing stage fright, the only way you can do that is by paying attention to yourself. I mean, that sounds really, really bad, but, the, but it is true. You cannot be worried if your attention is not on yourself, right? If your friend um, hurts themselves, Right. I mean, you can be like worried for your friend, but you would not have stage fright. You wouldn't know, am I going to say the wrong thing or whatever? You would be in that moment with your friend and your focus would be entirely on helping the friend. Right. Same thing if uh, not just hurt yourself physically, but maybe um, your friend has an emotional problem. You're listening to their problem and you are being with them and focusing entirely on them. Hopefully, <laughs> sometimes I'm listening and I'm like, okay, continue focusing on, continue focusing, and then I'm thinking about how I'm focusing, and then all of a sudden I'm just thinking about something entirely different. And I'm like, damn it, I'm, I'm not being a good, a good friend or a good husband right now. <laughs> anyway, so your focus needs to be on the audience. If you can do that, if you can be excited about what you're sharing with the audience, then there's not going to be room to worry, right? So any time, like in this video, I am constantly trying to, uh, thinking about how you might be you know, taking this information in, but it's coming from a place of excitement. I'm excited to share the idea with you. Right? And if you get frustrated by me going on tangents and stuff, that's because my, my focus is on the excitement of sharing it. Right? So sometimes I'm, I'm really bad about tangents because I'm just excited and playing around. And I do that exact same thing on stage as well. Right? But that is what I have used to overcome my stage fright. So to sum this up really quickly, stage fright. Um, first off, I'm not perfect. 
I have those the, that little nagging uh, voice in my head that says, you know, right before you're you're jumping on stage or right before I hit the record button or whatever, that little tiny voice that says you're not ready. Um, I've learned to not pay attention to that as often because uh, if you jump on, if you just like like the voice will say, don't start the video yet because you don't have an outline. And I'll be like, okay, okay. And, and if you just hit the video, hit the record button, and then you tell your brain, we're recording now. You might as well figure it out. Your brain figures it out. It's freaking awesome, right? But if if I were to accept that fear, then my brain would figure out why I should accept that fear, right? So from your brain's perspective, both. Both of these are correct. If I hit record, my brain goes, of course you should hit record and let's just, let's talk. But if I don't, if I say I'm not ready yet, I can't do it right now, then my brain goes, of course you're not ready right now. We need an outline. So this is exactly what, uh, what I found. I mean, in, in so many different areas, but especially for, for um, you know, doing these videos and as well as being on stage. You can always pick up the fear and you can always put it down. Uh, your job is to be excited about what you are telling the audience, to be focused on them. As far as the pre-show goes, Pre-show fear is entirely optional, okay? Even if you are on stage for the first time in your life, if you are experiencing pre-show fear, that is something that you don't have to do. You're doing it as an option, all right? And the reason I'm saying that is because you can only pay attention to one thing at a time. So, Nothing, there's no rule in comedy that says you need to stand behind the curtain uh, before your name is called and be in your head thinking, okay, I need to do this and then this joke. Do I have that joke ready? I'm not sure if I'm going to say that joke correct. And you think, well, I'm not sure if I know this joke. But then you say, okay, I do know this joke. But now I'm not sure if I know the whole set. And you kind of just go back and forth saying, I don't know the whole thing. I don't know this tiny thing. I don't know the whole thing. I don't know this tiny thing. It's basically your, your left brain and your right brain are kind of having a fight because your right brain says, oh yeah, I, I, it's, it's thinking about the whole picture and your left brain is thinking analytically and you can't really be using both of those. Um, you can't be analyzing from both sides at the same time, right? You, you, you either want to be analyzing the small, small part and then your, your right brain goes, oh, I don't like thinking about the small Part. I want to think about the whole thing. So you think about the whole thing and then your left brain goes, I don't like thinking about the whole thing. I want to think about the small thing. So you just end up in this giant, giant, uh, basically looping back and forth. So that is kind of why if you find yourself um, doing that, that is the reason. It's a fight between your left brain and your right brain. The way you exit that fight is by giving your brain something to pay attention to, right? You can watch the show and have fun. You can be outside. You can do anything that takes your mind off of the whatever you're afraid of. Um, so early on in, or not early on in my career, but I was still struggling with stage fright when I was working with uh, Kyle Cease. And if you know about Kyle Cease, uh, you check him out. I absolutely love um, all of his stuff. Anyway, so um, I was working with him and he challenged me to stop, um, to st stop thinking about the show until you actually pick up the microphone, right? So the challenge was to be in the moment backstage, right? And then be having fun. And then, so you're just having fun backstage, having fun backstage, and then your name is about to get announced or, you know, the, the comedian in front of you is on stage. Your job when, the, when your name is about to be announced is not to think about your material, is not to think about your opener. Your job is to stay in a place 
where being funny is natural, right? So think about the difference here. You're like, if I'm backstage and I'm just hanging out and having tons of fun, um, having tons of fun with everybody, I'm backstage, I'm backstage, and then finally I hear my name and I can just walk outside and I can just start being, I not start being, I don't have to change, right? Imagine if you're backstage and you're, you're just like, even if you're not stage fright, just, just do this and just know that one minute from now, one minute from this moment, you have to be really funny. You have to be engaging, right? Whether you're stage fright or not, you just put a barrier in front of you and, and, and the audience or being the person that you should be in front of the audience. Why not be performing backstage, right? Like I've said this before in, in the writing, before you start writing your material, be in the mental state that you want to be in when you are on stage, right? So like take this idea and, and extend it even further so that there's no difference. Like before I write material, I always go to whatever piece of material I am the most excited about. Usually that is the closer because the closer, like I can just read through it a couple times. I can hear the laughter again. Sometimes I come out with even better stuff that uh, a better punchline or something. But anyway, the reason I'm doing that is because every time I read it, maybe I'll read it like five times in a row and I'm in my head, I'm seeing the laugh, the, the laughter, I'm, I'm reliving the best moments. And after a couple minutes of that, then I'm in that same mental state that my best work already comes from, right? So now if I want to pivot and I want to talk about uh, something, some other topic, I'm already in the same mental state, right? I'm like silly and playful. And instead of trying to sit down and saying, I don't want to write, but anyway, so I'm, I'm not feeling this, but let's, let's write a topic. We'll circle the topic. Step one, we'll do a brainstorming. Never do that. You will get shit results every time. Anyway, so this is one of those tangents I was talking about. We we're talking about how, how much brainstorming sucks in a video about uh, uh, stage fright. Anyway, so yeah, that's, that's how far you can take this idea. And I would, I would highly encourage you to always work from a position of strength. So when you're backstage, you, you, there's nothing that says you have to freak out, right? And if you actually stop and think about it, then you'll realize that that freak out has never actually helped you, right? It has always been in your way. And even take this and take it into a new, so it's forget stand-up comedy. Think about, I like first dates because first dates um, are, are all, are feel always awkward. Like I always had a hard time on first dates. But anyway, like instead of worrying, has that worry ever actually made you, made, or made whatever the thing was go away? Have you ever like been in your head and been like, oh, that's the answer. And then you just walk off and uh, that never happens because your brain can generate problems quicker than you can solve them, right? And the problem is in your head. So you can't actually solve it. The, the, the problem, like once you find one thing, one solution, the problem is, will change and then you're still stressed out because you still don't have the correct answer. So I would, I would highly encourage you to ask yourself whether any of the fear in any situation, stand-up comedy or any, anywhere else where you experience that, kind, that same, same kind of fright, has it ever helped you? And the follow-up to that is if you were in a better mood, right? If you were in a better mental state, if you were working from a position of strength, then would you actually improve based on, if you could compare the two, you could compare the worried me before, before the show, worried me. I'm going to maybe 
spend maybe 30 minutes before the show just panicking and then rerunning my stuff. Will I be better because of the 30 minutes or will I be better if I just say, screw it, I don't even care. I'm just gonna go on stage. Maybe I'll say this, maybe I'll say it wrong, maybe I'll say something entirely different, but I'm at least gonna just be myself, be fun, and see what happens. Which you would, would have the best show? So I would encourage you to ask yourself that question, and I would love to hear your answer. Um, we're gonna wrap this up. I, I thought this was gonna be like a five minute video, and it turned out 25 minutes. Um, Real quick, I want to invite the, um, all the students who have not yet swung by the open, or what do I call it, open hours? The office hours. <laughs> I want to, anybody who has not tried the office hours yet, come by. We have so much fun. I've actually learned some stuff myself. Uh, I got to talking about improv comedy, uh, and I loved it. Um, so I've even learned some new stuff. So I would love to hear your questions. I would love to hear the comments that you have on this video as well as all the other videos. So thanks a lot for listening. I'm Jared Voley from creativestandup.com.